Hello and welcome back to these asynchronous sessions on additive manufacturing. So I believe that by now you should all be familiar with different additive manufacturing processes, the materials, the applications, and also the specific advantages and limitations of each one of these processes. Also, if you remember in one of the first lectures, we've mentioned that one of the major drivers when a company sets out to develop a product is actually the cost of developing that product. And this is common both to uh, more conventional manufacturing systems or uh, also advanced manufacturing systems like additive manufacturing. So today, uh, and having that in mind, we're going to be looking at how we can calculate the costs associated with the production of components using additive manufacturing, but also how that uh, or those costs can be uh, modeled in different ways depending on the process that you select to produce those components. So broadly speaking, the costs fall into four main categories. It's the machine purchase uh, costs, plus uh, the operations costs, or the costs to operate that machine, plus uh, the costs associated with the materials used to uh, build the parts, uh, but also uh, the materials used as support structures, plus the labor costs associated with that batch production. Starting with the operation costs, this is simply uh, the build time multiplied by the cost rate of the machine. So the build time is a time that our machine is going to be either uh, printing material or depositing material into the building platform or scanning the building platform uh, multiplied by the cost rate of the machine. And these cost rates can be complicated function of uh, different factors. Uh, one is the cost of maintaining that specific equipment. Uh, the other can be the utility costs, for example, electricity, but also the cost of uh, the floor space in the factory and the company overhead. So it can be a quite complicated uh, calculation that will not go into detail in this module. And uh, if needed, this uh, value of the cost rate will be given to you. The other component is uh, the material, uh, the cost of the materials. And this is uh, much more simple to, to determine, and it's basically the number of parts that we have in that specific build, multiplied by the volume of each part, multiplied by the cost per unit of mass, and the specific density of the material that you select. However, and as we've said in the beginning, there may be some differences in terms of the cost model depending on the process that you select. So for example, for uh, powder processes where the build material is not 100% uh, recyclable, this uh, material cost has a complex dependency on uh, recyclability of the material that we use. Uh, also on the fraction of the build volume made up of parts versus the loose powder, and this loose powder is normally the powder that we use to support the, the part that is being built and also the efficiency of our process in terms of capturing this loose powder and recycling it. So the, for that purpose, the term KR will be introduced in this uh, equation for the purpose of modeling the additional material consumption that will take into, into account these factors that we have just mentioned. But also when we're calculating the total material costs for our processes, we also need to bear in mind if we need to use support materials. So in case we need to use support materials to support the building of our parts, like for example, in fuse deposition modeling or stereolithography, the volume and cost of the supports uh, needed to create these parts or each one of these parts must also be taken into account. And for that purpose, we will introduce the factor KS. This uh, will be take, uh, taking a value uh, between 1.1 and 1.5, depending on the material, depending on the operating uh, process. And this will be added to our KR uh, factor that takes into account powder-based systems. So if we take all of that into account, total material cost is uh, simply the KS multiplied by the KR, multiplied by the total number of parts in our batch, multiplied by the volume of each single part, multiplied by the cost per unit of mass and the density of our uh, material. The other component is the labor cost, 
and the labor cost is simply uh, the labor rates in pounds per hour multiplied by the time uh, T1. And this time T1 is the sum of different uh, times. So it's a time that, for example, the worker uh, needs to set up the build, for example, filling in the material reservoirs or setting up the process parameters, then remove the parts from the building platform once this is printed, the, all the post-processing of the part, the cleaning, the impregnation of the part, and again, cleaning the machine and setting up the machine again for the next builds. All of that will be taken into account in this uh, uh, factor uh, T1. In terms of the purchase cost for one build, uh, this can be calculated as the purchase price of that machine, of that machine. So how much did we have to pay? How much did the company have to invest to acquire that specific equipment? Multiplied by the total time required to build our uh, parts. And this is probably the, the, the biggest variable when calculating the costs associated with additive manufacturing. Again, here we'll have to make some assumptions. One of those assumptions is that our machine will be operating 95% of the time. So we will be printing or working 95% of the time throughout an entire year. And also we need to estimate the useful life of that machine. So for how many years can we use that machine in good conditions to print parts? So taking those assumptions into consideration, the purchase cost for one specific build or batch of components is the cost of the machine multiplied by the total time to build that batch divided by 0.95 times 24 hours times 365 days a year multiplied by the useful life of the machine. In this way, we can calculate the total purchase cost allocated to that specific build. In terms of um, the build time, this is probably, the, the as we've, we've just said, the, the biggest variable in terms of the cost model for additive manufacturing and depends on different things. One is uh, the, the, the size of the parts. So the bigger the parts, obviously, the more time it will be required to build um, that, that specific part and the batch. The, the shape of the parts, so the more complex the parts, the, the higher will be the time to build because we may need to include support structures and that will increase our building time. Obviously, also the number of parts and the speed of the machine in terms of the printing, in terms of the recoding. So the higher the speed, the lower will be the time to build. So obviously, this build time will depend very much on the type of machine that we get to produce that batch. Again, here we'll have to make some assumptions. So we will assume that normally we are given um, the size of the parts, specifically in terms of the, the volume of these parts. Uh, we will also assume that we are given the dimensions of the bounding box, and those bounding boxes are aligned uh, with the coordinate axis in both x, y, and z direction. So in order to calculate the build time, the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the time required to recode both build and support materials. So this is uh, very common in uh, systems like, for example, uh, SLS or uh, binder jetting or SLA. So as you can see here in this figure, we'll need to take into account the time that is required for this roller to deposit material uh, on the building platform and to retract. So in terms of recall times uh, for support structures, uh, as we've said, uh, this will have two major components. One, the time required to recode the support structures, and the other, the time required to recode the building material. The time required to recode the support structures is simply the number of layers of those support structures multiplied by the time to recode the support structures. And the same applies in terms of the building material, where we multiply the time required to uh, recode uh, the building uh, structures times the number of layers of our uh, parts. 
In terms of the number of layers of the support structure, this is simply the heights, the total heights of the support structures divided by the layer thickness of those uh, support structures. The same applies in terms of the number of layers of, uh, for, the, for the, uh, the part that is being built. But in this case, we'll use the dimensions of the bounding box in the zeta direction divided then by the slice thickness of our parts. In terms of uh, the scan deposition time, this time is a function of uh, the cross-sectional area uh, for each one of the layers that we're printing, but also uh, the scan or fill-in strategy that is defined by the user uh, when setting up the process, and obviously the number of layers that we have to print. So for the calculation of the scan deposition time, again, we'll have to make some assumptions. The first, we will assume a building platform where we have a 2D layout of parts on that platform. We'll also assume that our parts have similar shapes and dimensions, and that in between those parts, both in the X and Y direction, we have a gap to prevent the adhesion of the parts and in that way, damage our building process. So as you can see here, we have a building platform. This is a two-dimensional uh, problem where we have our parts laid out in both X and Y direction. The first thing that we need to do uh, to be able to calculate the scan deposition time is to calculate how many parts can we fit into our building platform, both in X and Y direction. And the approach to calculate the number of parts in each one of these directions is uh, the same. So, for example, in the X direction, we need to know um, the size of the platform, the total size of the platform in the X direction. And we need to add the gaps between the parts in the X direction. Then we subtract this gap that is normally of 10 millimeters. And this is just an assumption that we make. It can be different depending on the process but we are assuming that we have a gap of 10 millimeters on each side of the platform to prevent adhesion of the parts to the, um, to the vat or to the building platform. And then we divide that by the dimensions of the bounding box in the X direction, and we add the gaps also between the bounding boxes in the X direction. By doing so, we can calculate the parts that we can fit, the maximum number of parts that we can fit in the X direction. Using the same principle, we can calculate the number of parts that fit in the Y direction. Multiplying these two parts of the equation, we get the total number of parts that we are able to fit um, into uh, the building platform. Once we know the number of parts that we can fit, then we need to multiply that number of parts by the scanning length. And this is the total distance that our printhead or laser will be traveling in order to build our parts. This is then divided by the speed at which this laser or printhead will be traveling. And obviously this scanning speed average depends very much on the system uh, that, we, uh, that we use. I'd just like to draw your attention that the value of 3600 uh, here is normally used to convert the total scanning time from seconds to hours. Obviously, uh, in terms of additive manufacturing, uh, there are also some uh, delays in terms of the printing process. And those delays uh, in, the, in the building of the, of the parts or the batch uh, can, for example, incorporate things like uh, the platform uh, move time, uh, the pre-recode delay, the post-recode delay, the need to clean the nozzles between the layers, um, the need, for example, to calibrate sensors during the printing process, but also, for example, temperature uh, set point delays. For example, when uh, we need to change materials and we need to heat up the printing air to specific temperature, all those times will need to be, to be taken into uh, account. Obviously, these delays uh, are often uh, defined by the, by the user and will depend upon uh, build details for uh, a particular process. 
So in addition to these pre-delays and post-delay times, we can also have additional delays that we will uh, incorporate here as the time to start. For example, systems like uh, selective laser sintering, where the building process occurs within a building chamber, normally uh, to set up the printing within a selective laser system, we have to um, increase the temperature within the building chamber in order to avoid shrinkage of the material. So that is taken into account in the cost model as the time to start. So once we know all these um, delay, the code scanning time, we can calculate, go back, calculate the total build time. We can then use that total build time to actually be able to calculate the purchase um, allocated to the building. And with that, we can calculate the total cost of production for the batch uh, that the company has set out to do. So, Again, I'd just like to draw your attention that this is a model that allows you to estimate the cost. It's not 100% precise, but at least it serves the purpose of helping the companies estimating the costs associated with the manufacturing of a component. And this normally helps the companies making important decisions before actually committing uh, into the development of a specific product. During the next live session, we're going to be looking at a practical example of application of this cost model to a specific manufacturing process or additive manufacturing process, and how can we use it to calculate the costs and the times required to build a batch of components. Again, thank you very much for listening, and I will see you during the next live session.